so hello guys um nice of you to be here my name is kp and here we have tt ini and chooks i got that right right chuka please lord not chooks i beg you i'm so sorry it's well, fine. a great start blame it on all right so here we're basically um doing a overall summary um of the music industry uh basically these are state of the union address for the music industry for the year uh seeing as afro beats uh african sounds have you know become viable exports to the world uh in a way where they share spaces with some of the most important sounds you know of all time so we'll just be going through a few uh discussions and first of be, uh first one being uh about essence uh essence's journey as a global it's uh been interesting and basically it not starting in nigeria and gaining prominence from south africa and coming into nigeria uh while ginger on the other hand uh with featuring whiskey and burner boy uh didn't you know get that acclaim that essence got um do you uh for instance think the local market in nigeria can um efficiently propel a song globally chuka i'll start from you okay um i think the first thing is for lack of a better word the law of relativity but it's more of the law of relatability because if people can relate they can relate um It's one thing to like the sound, love the music, how it sounds. But if you if you can't connect on a deeper level, you can't. So as great as a song as Ginger is, it's very nice for Nigeria. So if you listen to the chorus, if you don't understand pidgin and some Yoruba, you enjoy it but you won't you won't connect on a certain level with it. Mm-hmm. But when the song says what the lyrics of essence says especially in the hook uh you you don't have to try too hard it's going to connect it is it's you no know, it's a, first of all we all know that made in lagos is a beautifully crafted album and i remember when i was listening to it the first time even though i you know listened to everything straight and loved all the songs the very first time i heard it i i like oh this essence track you know is like my favorite songs on the, on the album were reckless and essence of course simple and once you knew you know for yourself that feeling every now every once in a while there are some songs that the same way you feel about it the rest of the world will feel about it and i think as far as nigeria is concerned it's just having that we love afro beats and we connected it because so many times we can say things that we connect it's almost like when they're speaking slangs in the family But when the language allows it for example to go beyond the family to the global village I think a lot of massive things can happen. I think that will happen again and again as we keep having songs that contain stuff that allow people to mm. connect. I I I tell you what I think about that. Uh I think when it comes to um the question of whether the local market here is viable enough to push a song on a global scale i think the simple answer obviously is yes because if you if you look at it from a side where you have songs like Jerusalem mm-hmm. and Yaba Buluku mm-hmm. i mean they didn't go as far as essence but those songs existed in those regions yep. until they came into our market they didn't get the prominence that you know yeah. they needed to but you know again success uh, like chuka said is very relative uh success you know what success means to this kid is not what it means to uh focalistic for instance mm-hmm. at the end of the day uh but at the end of, uh but i think for the success of essence it's uh coming from south africa looking at the artist even if you look at burner <coughs> boy and uh whiskey uh there's a little bit of expected greatness right yep. when it comes yeah, to definitely. those two guys you're like oh, of course it's going to be a hit mm-hmm. you guys uh but when it came to essence uh you know we know what whiskey can do but we didn't know the full Extent. like in anime the final form <laughs> of things and she there was a little bit of uh, something that the market was missing which was like you know unexpected greatness and i think putting 
uh, structure behind that. Now, going to the market in South Africa, there's a little bit of more structure. There's a, there's a, uh, there's more structure over there in the sense that there's more investment from the side of labels and streaming companies, DSPs, establishing themselves fully. Like if you see the operations here, it's more of, you know, leasing based mm-hmm. uh, operations. There's Skeletons. No, exactly. And to push a song is a task of intention. And you need to be very intentional about uh, put, uh, putting that out. And when you put, you know, good publicity with a very, um, with something that the market has not seen before, it's easy for it to just, you know, blow outside the, the market. So looking at the artists, the characters in play, Whiskey and, you know, Burner Boy, obviously, we expect that it must be good, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But, you know, uh, I think that really helped. Uh, the fact that, you know, there was unexpected greatness with Essence, yeah. I think, uh, and then structure being put behind that uh, really, really uh, helped that. Well, let me know what you think, Kenny. Yeah, I think, you know, we've definitely had songs, you know, that, you know, um, from, like, back home here in Nigeria, like, after doing well here, you know, they sort of later caught on, you know, like, you know, we are saying that uh, for Essence, you know, the South African thing and everything, but we've had songs do very well here and, you know, go global. So, you know, I think there's no there's no um, straight road to, to like, how, like, the music can go, of you course. know. Yeah, there's no straight road, you know, and we are playing in, like, a very, very global market right now, you know. You could, you could have songs, you know, take off probably even in Asia before. Of course. You know, everybody now starts, you know, jumping. And that's a very it. important point for yeah. people making music now. You're yeah, not making so music for Nigeria. You're not making for Nigeria. You're making so music for the world. The writers of Nigeria, you know, don't hold you back. You exactly. Know? You, can, you, can, you can get on playlists, you know, and mm. pitch your stuff. If you feel like your song can do well in this region, you know, you know, can pitch it there particularly and find a way to, you know, just maneuver and also appear in a global market. So I don't even think, you know, every Nigerian should be making music for Nigeria. Exactly. You know, the Absolutely. world, there are, like, you know, billions of people across the world. Exactly. You, shouldn't, you shouldn't limit yourself. Now, if you feel, you know, Nigeria is, like, your where your market the will core. be, you know. That's fine as well. And, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. But, like, you know, you can try try out things, you know. I like I like the way, you know, Mr. Easy, you know, does a lot of stuff that, you know, aligns with the Latin, with the Latin mm. market, you know. Mm. So, yeah, you know, you can just... You can play your game anyway, like you can take any route, but as long as you know you're defin yeah, you know, achieving your definition of success, you know, that's why it's important. Yeah, yeah. true. I think before I move to TT, I think to Ini's point, uh, and that's a very important point in the sense that if tomorrow you hear a Burner Boy song you don't like, it may not be making it for you. Somebody <laughs> it else is killing it, it for yes. another region yes. because Fact. there's this uh, mm-hmm. common baby song that uh, Jay Baldwin has on his album with uh, Mr. <laughs> Easy. I really, really like that song. But, you know, it wasn't a song that did well here locally. But digitally, Mr. Easy yeah, exactly numbers. killed it. So, numbers, so the question about the viability <laughs> of the local markets and, you know, the growth of Essence, uh, you know, in juxtaposition with Ginger, Titi, your verdict. <laughs> Can I plead the fear? <laughs> Please don't do that. Um, I think that for the most part, we've we've all, you know, echoed the same sentiment that yes, absolutely, Nigeria has the power to push a song to a global level. But I think that that's mostly because we're everywhere. Um, and so our, like the web that we've woven makes it easy and possible. If something is popping at home, when Spino goes somewhere that he has uh, a residency, he's going to play it there. And um, when Tunes goes somewhere in Europe, he's going to play the songs that are popping at home. Um, when Jews goes somewhere uh, with his thingy at Kiss, he's going to play the songs that are popping at home. Um, and I think that for the most part, that is, I mean, Jews is not Nigerian, but you get my point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that is one of the the things that we have that makes it super, not easy, but super doable for Nigeria to be able to push a song. It might take a little longer mm. because it happens in season. So it depends on when they come back, when they get what what is buzzing on the ground, and then when they go back. That's why a song like Four would have taken a year to travel. But to your point about structure... It, all, that is the organic part of it. It is combined with the intention of the, the, the label or the machine behind the person or behind the song and how they want to decide to move it. Mm. 
And if it's a song that is very um, Nigerian or very Afrobeat, that they still want to push, yeah. that's where the intention seriously comes in. Mm. Because they're going to need to... It's very simple. If you're going to tell somebody that, oh my gosh, you know, I am... I'm like... Can we like swear and stuff? Yeah. Okay. I'm like the shit back home and all that stuff. They're going to want to check. Yeah. So if 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 whoever is taking whiz to to the lifestyle team in the in the US is taking whiz to radio, yeah. um, takes this record and is you know telling them all of that, is their job is made so much more easier being that back home whiz is actually what they say he is. Of course. So you need whether you like it or not the song to at least pop off in some way or the artist mm. or the brand or something to the home ground to give it a boost mm. for you to be able to even... So the songs that are popping in South Africa, not, it's not just popping in South Africa because Whiskey just came out from nowhere. He's worked of in course. that market for a while. Of so whoever was working the song, whether it went organically or they yeah. worked it there, yeah. it did happen because when they went to have those conversations or you know, people already know Whiskey, there was already that they need to build. So mm. in that, in that looking at it in that way, 100% Nigeria yeah. does have a mm -hmm. very important role to play in explosion of our music globally. Yeah. And still building on that point before I move to the next question, how important is being known in your home to being known globally? It is, I would say, it depends on your goal. Right. Um, if you're trying to be a superstar, it is super important mm. because even those who've gained um, economic success mm. outside, when they now want to go commercially as a superstar, mm. they still find a way to connect back home. You can link it to sports. You can link it to fashion. You mm. can link it anywhere you want to look at it. They will have already they're making money out there. They're yeah. doing well out there. But now they want to take it to the next level. They want to make sure that you cannot hear their name and not know who they are. Yeah. They need to find a way to relate it to their home ground and their home base mm. and, you know, own that. And, right. Yeah. Looking at like the songs like uh, a song like Bloody Samaritan, who, which like charted number one on the Tontable chart, uh, being the highest the female solo artist has gone with a single on the chart, and also Omalay's Godly being on the charts for about 11 weeks uh, during in 2020. Um, but also, people don't consider that as Omalay's best song. What do you think made those songs? Uh, have that special effect. Um, I'll still stay on you, TT. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Omale had, I don't know, I, I think for Ira, it's almost, almost easy to spot. Mm. There was a combination of the, I don't even newness is the right word, but, you know, we like shiny things. It was new, so we're paying <laughs> attention to it. Mm. There was a combination of that, her entire presence in itself, the intention and the precision of the team behind her, the and yeah. the just the digital, <coughs> just them harnessing the digital space. All of that kind of like, you know, stars aligning, as you would say, happened overnight. Mm. But all of that being lined up to happen at the same time, Mm. They had the money, they had the right look, they had a beautiful, amazing girl with so much confidence and all of that lining up together at once. Like, it was, it's not a, it's not a confused, it's not, it's not, you know, out of, out of context or out of whatever that, that um, Ira Stars, Bloody mm. Samaritan, any other song on that project would have done. Or That's my favorite project well. of the year, by the yeah? way. Yeah? Mm. I've heard some, some That's actual... That's not dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've That's heard some actual um, and I'll arguments tell you yeah, it look, it look, for it, it to be wild. album of the year because if you look at the year, there hasn't been that many like I, that. I, I think it's Joe Boys though, but you know, I, I, you know, <laughs> I mean, everybody has their, but I mean, if you ask me plainly, I'll say it's Thames because I have bias towards Thames. But mm. I think Arasta's album had that element of surprise for me. I'm like, oh, everybody says, oh, she looks like Thames, she sounds like Thames. There are even videos on YouTube that say they are, diff they are from the same mother and different fathers <laughs> and all of that funny stuff. But at the end of the day, I think Ira Starr's um, album, and there are a lot of fantastic albums like 
Ini said uh, as well, uh, like with Joe Boy's album. But I think Ira, what Ira Starr's album did was what uh, the the effect Ira Starr's album had for me was the same effect Fire Boy's uh, second album. Oh, Apollo. Yeah, Apollo? yeah, had on me because. When I heard tattoo, I'm like, this guy is playing with fire. He's, exp- he's experimenting <laughs> with a sound that, you know, it might end up, you know, not working out. But it worked out. And I like that straight off the gate. I mean, she dropped an EP, but straight off the gates with an album like that, she wasn't afraid to take on, you know, She different... dropped both the EP and the album in the exactly. same year, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. She yeah. wasn't afraid to take on, you know, different sounds, sound dynamic, R&B, party jams yeah, yeah and in a way where even though you know i'm not gen z i could still <laughs> understand what she was talking about do you get what i'm saying even if was you, she talking about gen z stuff not really it's just you know the thing about gen z again is they you know we clown them for being too sensitive but they, they i don't are, i'm gen z i mean, I mean maybe they will not Titi, agree you're not gen z like, <laughs> but i'm just saying might not agree but i i i but, but i'm with them <laughs> but the thing about exactly the thing about Gen Z is people clown them for ah oh, these people are too soft in my days you know you, we don't my cry ab- we don't cry about things like this you know we're hard but at the end of the day in your days were just sun and farm and all bruh, that stuff I think bruh. I think for me the most you know important thing about her sound and you know who she is is you know there's like a very very you know there's a high level of intention to everything she does from her style from the way she sounds correct you know from you know her song choices and i remember mm-hmm. um um i don't remember when exactly but you know definitely like a couple months before like the new album dropped um they had they had like this um like a private concert Listen. kind yeah. of thing for her yeah. with some industry guys and some of her fans i was there with like a friend for you know from 49th street i remember like i whispered to him in his ear like Cause it was really loud, like, yeah. man, like, what they are doing with this girl? And I remember, look, that was before, you know, she became you yeah. know, this. I remember he said something about, you know, very intentional from, like, you know, she had, like, this really cool all-female band, you know, the way she was, exactly. you know, interacting with the fans, yeah. the way, you know. She's like, a superstar. Exactly. And you can kind of... You, know, you, you can, can see that clearly. And you can kind of... Exactly. What you <laughs> just said is very... Be- the fact that she can communicate that clearly without you know you trying to figure it out you get what i'm saying is very uh simple to do when you see it done but it's actually something that is lacking in the industry like there's no clear communication of a lot of artist brands uh but to the question about you know what i think is special about uh the song is first of all the inten- the, the intention you know, behind the brand of Ira Star. She's beyond the music. She's a movement. <laughs> Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? She's a movement. You know, she, she started the album with Gen Z anthem, basically knowing that... Knowing everything. Exactly. Everything, <laughs> how it's going to turn out and all of that stuff. So I think it's the intention and also the surprise, like, oh, this girl is not, you know, Thames is the stepsister. She's actually <laughs> her own person. She's who she is. She has her own story. And the story kind of flows, you know, when she sp- yeah. spoke about, you know, her dad being in the hospital, she, she experiences heartbreak. She, you know, there's, there's an album about prayer. She's not deviating from the fact that she's a Yoruba girl. She can speak Yoruba. She can speak English. She can do songs with Fouché. She can, you know, do a party jam and all of that. And I think, you know, it makes me excited about the future to see artists that are not, you know, afraid to take on new sounds and, you know, uh, you know, get on with it mm. with their, without losing their own individualism. But I'll, I'll let Chuka uh, speak on that. Yeah, well, I think it's what happens when the, for lack of a better word, fearlessness of the young meets the wisdom of the old. Because don't forget, you're still dealing with Don Jazzy. Jazzy. <laughs> you know, so look, when there was no industry, literally, when it was rebuilding from scratch. I mean, you know, I always say more it would have enslaved us. They didn't split. It, bro. Like they would have signed everybody. Bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> Do you get what I'm you know, so, And Jazzy built it from the ground up. There was a group back then in the UK called Big Brothers. Mm. So they had, a, it was, it had a, a, a huge hit in the UK at the time. There's this big bro taking over the show. Don Jazzy could produce that song. Mm. Like This is like maybe 2001 or something. Mm-hmm. You know, he did those songs for them. Then hops into Nigeria, 
you know JJC for one nice goal. Then goes yeah. when they now toss him and the band out of the group. Then good. It, 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 <laughs> 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 and then from there, everything just snowballs, you know, and literally continued building. Then more hits broke up. And he didn't end it. You know, he stayed rebuilding Maven. You know, so look. You can't really break somebody who has gone through all that, yeah. you know. And now you have a girl who, you know, she sounds like that mix you need. She, she's not, she's not so Gen Z in her sound that the of older's can, older ones can't relate. Yeah, you know. And she's literally a pop star. Literally. So and she's been groomed right. You know, it, personally, I feel like they missed the trick. Honestly, when they named the song "Bloody Samaritan," mm. personally, because I felt like. More people will find it hard to find the song based on that name, mm. and not everybody's going to Shazam because it's only Gen Z and millennials that probably Shazam. Those who just like the song and don't know the title of the song, because mm. you would after this song, Bless Samantha is not the first thing that comes to your mind. It's vibes on vibes. It's vibes on vibes. <laughs> so yeah, but then I mean, there's, there also has to be that balance of their creativity, mm. right? And and vibes on vibes is a little. We know. So that's what I'm um, like. What was. What would I mean, the way it's, uh, I just need to call that yeah. to Zilla Oaks's vibes on vibes is actually a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> so, so thank you for clearing that there up. You so, you know, so I just feel like, you know, that was what made it, it, it might have helped as in terms of giving it that cult feel. Of course. You know, but I also feel like it closed up the doors for those who would have searched for it in the regular way. Of course. You know, because most people wouldn't, wouldn't put her name. Of they course. didn't know who she was. Couldn't spell know, her but, name for the yes, longest time. That new, but then, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, I guess that that's why we should hope that um, um, the technological advancements, like things like searching with the lyrics, yes. helps. Yes. Because if yes. you just go put vibes on vibes, yes. um, Nigerian popular song, it exactly. will come out. Yes. Exactly. But that's for us who check. And the thing no, is but that generally, though, so you know, those, 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 that, that, that um, thing was made based on people searching for yes. songs but in I'm that saying, way. Um, I'm talking about the generation who won't. Yeah, like um, they're, they're, they're cut out from like this kind of. This, yeah, basically, not, like, it probably would have been bigger if, like, you know, you had like that kind of title. Not saying that it wasn't huge. Not, it wasn't huge, yeah. Because you know? I'm, look at Nigeria, right? No matter how you look at it, there's still like, a huge um, section that are using feature phones. Like yeah, so tricks. they're not searching for it then. They're not, but they love so the then music. The name my point. So it's going to be hard for them to find because if you... Where would they have found it in the first place, even if they know the name? Yeah, so for example, <coughs> quick, quick example, if you are talking to people who know music, you know, they're your friends and co, and they themselves, they are searching themselves. So they're already closed off because it's not the easiest thing to say, oh, one person just picks up yeah. Shazam and says, I'm feeling vibes on vibes, yeah. and then it comes up. You know, it, it, those parts, and, I'm, and I understand that we're not necessarily directing uh, the music to Apple them. Apple and directly, Spotify, hope you're you know. listening. Pay this man. <laughs> He's giving you but, some insights. Uh. But Trailer, is, hope you're listening. It is <laughs> it's key to understand that even within this uh, space, right, yeah. there are a lot of people who are on the outside looking in, mm. who really want to be finding ways to, you know, in the old days it was radio. You know, so you would call in and say, oh, we're trying to find this song, name is this, and you will get it, right? Now you've called. Now it's now your job to remember two things. Yeah. First, remember her name because she's new. Then remember Bloody Samaritan. You know, so it's not as straightforward as it. I love her name, first of all. I need to put that out. We, I feel like, you know. It's very futuristic. But then again, um, I was, I'm one of the guys who was in love with a song of ice and fire, which most people know as Game of Thrones, mm. when it was books. Mm. And of course, there was Arya Stark. Oh. Mm. You know, mm. in the I have been waiting for somebody to actually make a connection with yes. that, or, or make a joke out of it, or yes. I don't know. So I feel like it's a it's like just to the two names yeah. twisted to Stark from the Star, right. and then the Ira from the Arya, mm. and I think it's brilliant because if you look at the story of of Arya Stark, mm. like she was the you know I kid, formidable. Yes. I didn't watch Game of Thrones. Didn't care. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. bro. What? Bro. At least I watch no. I watch Kotoa This is about to just <laughs> <laughs> what about, what about yeah. panel on that? It's about so to become a whole we have, thing of We why. have just disbarred him from the panel. All right, cool. This, yeah, this so. is it now. Camera, <laughs> please don't show me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, moving to the next question. Uh, I'll start with Inu. But sorry, before you move on, I, yeah. I, I also like to like, you know, touch on something Trigger yes. said that I feel is very important, you know. 
um having like you know young or new artists yeah. go through like the kind of incubation period which you know oh yeah that they have at like moving records like yeah. beautiful things that's why when they bring out artists you, you know like what are they feeding them finished products they you come know? out and they know what they are it's doing fine. and very the confidence is very yes. vivid yo very very and it's it's so important i know like you know um a lot of people don't like going through like a labor route anymore everybody wants to be independent mm-hmm. and everybody maybe wants, come and sponsor the show see for, all the nice things they're <laughs> saying <laughs> it's, not, it's not for everybody like some people might just have to like you know i can imagine like her coming out mm. as an independent it would have been very very different yeah oh, yes. very very different yes. but you know great job to like those guys man yeah. shout out the prince shout out don jazzy yeah and uh so the next um discussion is basically on i mean the elephant in the room which is love and wanting to go in. Why is it the elephant in the room? I mean, he said, Ooh. 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 I, feel, I, feel, I feel... Wait, 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 wait. Let me just run. Bro. You see why he's like, like Reggie. You see why he's... He is he's, in it. <laughs> Yo, to win it. it. <laughs> All right, so love and wanting to... I mean, we heard it and we're like, oh, nice song. And we're just like, locally here. Mm. And... You know, people are, uh, outside the market heard it and they were like, this is the best song of all time. After Michael Jackson bad, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, is there a gap between the local uh, cravings and international demand? And if so, how can that gap be closed? I'll start with Ine because it seems the most excited. Bro, Super really excited. Cool. <laughs> first of, first of I, I would like to first, um, man. I, man, Siki has been getting a lot of hit on Twitter and stuff like from people, Shame. from haters, man. Hit They're hitting. Ah, okay. They're hitting on the fact that <laughs> I'm surprised. You know, quote unquote, you know, I know a lot of people might like take this the wrong way. Like Let right now, his song is doing better than like the songs of a lot of their faves, and you mm-hmm. can't you can't kill him for that. He made a great. He makes great music. Yeah. Man, that guy makes like I don't know how to explain it to you guys. I feel like I made a mistake man, asking him. First. <laughs> that, guy, that guy makes great music, man. Felony. He does. That kiss me something something. Yeah. Kiss My me favorite like is Scoin Scoin. I'm just watching Yo, everybody as he, they're sleeping on he, it. That that EP or album, yeah. or I think the project Fire Man. That guy's making great DTF. That guy's making great music for a long time. Mm-hmm. I think the stars just aligned for him. I don't even remember what the question was anymore. <laughs> <laughs> But the stars just align yeah. for him and, and he makes great music and and I think that that is like a that is like a like a like he should be like a knock on the door of like every single artist when you make great music at some point you know it's it okay. might not happen all together it might not be on CK's level yeah. but people will feel it that and guy has been making for a and while you're right because that, that I mean, and he produces too also like yeah, you know, of course great, that, great, 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 great they also write by the way so, <laughs> to Ines point about like if you make great music uh, the market will you know find it one day Burner Boy 2017 yo was like another example B list, C list artists, oh, or tech guys doing all tech music, and suddenly 2019. Wait, anybody ever opened their mouth to say Burner is doing all tech? Oh, of course, now. Before, 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 like, oh, break out, this break out, break out. Is, you know, yeah, you know, yeah uh, different, but all. Am I, am I, am I wrong? A, a lot of Nigerians, eh, anything that you can't really see as yeah, like, you just put it in the I, I feel like, I, 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 I feel like we're thing. getting into the Ote scene, but <laughs> the question again, Ini, was is there a, you know, disparity between the local demand and international, you know, demand and how can that gap be closed? Well, I think, you know, like, I mean, given like, Ni- Ni- Nigeria as a country is is huge. Like Nigeria is actually bigger than a lot of people think. You know, a lot of people have not probably have not like been to half of the country. Yeah. You know, um, I was in Sokoto one day, and you know, there's this song I, you know, you know, um, long and short, something from Juju Boy Star. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they were playing that song at the club there, or yeah, a, cl- a bar. Let no, me not call it a club, a bar there. And in my head, I'm like, ah, hey, this one's really here. You know, Nigeria is a big country and like you have to a lot of songs won't relate. Felony is not going to relate to like a lot of people won't relate to felony. That's the fact. Great, great, great song. Great song. Who broke, like, your, who broke your heart that you were related <laughs> to felony? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not going to get into that. Ah! Right now, but, but yeah, but like, you know, and and even for someone like Whiskey, as big as Whiskey is, you know, you see him. You know, um, big, big ways, big ways, you know, big ways. You see, like some of his songs that you see, like, I don't know if he does it intentionally, like making songs. I think at some point he probably was making songs, particularly for the Nigerian market. And you have something like sounds from the other side. People call it, you know, mid. Like, I think that I'm album, like, sorry, I'll just stop you. I think that album was released 
Ahead of its time. Ahead of its time. That, that's, that's, because that's, that's a very good that album, is, you know. I don't want to. I let don't me just say something. Let me just say something. Let me just say something else about. But you know that that's a great album. One yeah, of the best from Nigeria in a long time, actually. Mm-hmm. But you know, um, I think the point is like the the market or the Nigerian they were not prepared for that kind of sound at that time, and you know that that is always going to be a thing, you know that. Uh, Probably like you're making music that is ahead of its time. You know, you've had guys like even Kanye with like it and and Heartbreaks, you know. And you know, that's always going to be a thing. You might be making music. And Soldier Boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, no. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. But but yeah, um so sometimes um some songs might be better suited for the local market. Yes. Some songs might, might be better suited for like the global yeah. market. Some songs might, you know, just be ahead of its it's time for the local market, and you know, probably later they cannot come back to it. Some songs can be that way for, you know, the global market also. So it's just like a lot of roads, like I said earlier. You know, so the markets. Yeah, there are just <laughs> <laughs> a lot of roads. So you know, yeah. but I think I think the fact is, you know, and one thing that you know, as um, I I see as a thing is, great music, you know, will always find its way to like you know do what you you know it has to do with like the great you know um skeleton or body behind yeah. it. We'll you know, always find his way. You know, I feel Titi has a few notes because <coughs> she's now in that thinking man pose. Uh, so <laughs> give it to us, hot, hot. Um, I, you know, I kind of in my head, I yes. was so sure I was going to be the last person. So I was like, <laughs> super chilled. And That's what you get on this show, spontaneity. <laughs> you know, but okay. Um, if there is a gap between what Nigeria can produce and what the international market is looking for, is your question. Mm. No, there's no gap in what we can produce and what they want. Mm. There's a gap in getting them to hear it. But do you there's think it's more the of the audience education about what so music there's, is? It's, it, there's, a, there's a gap in the promotion. There's a gap in the, in the resources that we have to get the music to the, to the global market. So it's market. a structural gap? Yes. Okay. Because CK made Love One Tintin Tin two years ago. And I mean, 2020 is like five years ago, but yeah. <laughs> he made, he made, CK made Love One Tinty before the apocalypse. I think 2019, yeah. <laughs> ah, 2019. yeah. He made it before the world ended. Yeah. And then now that we were all renewed In, and refreshed, we heard it. Post corona. Now, the thing is, songs like that that he would make, or songs that um, just ETA could make, or songs that people like Famous could make in the, in the future, or, or whatever. The global audience is looking for everything, right? They're looking for the Latino type of sounds. They're looking for the R&B type of sounds. They're looking for whatever it is. And we know that we produce all of that kind of sound here. So the gap is not in what we are capable of producing. The gap is in the getting them to hear what we're capable of producing. And so it's in the structure hmm. in that how many people, if not for TikTok, will hmm. not be having this conversation. And <laughs> And, and... <laughs> And, okay, you know, let's be, the digital space, right? <laughs> if not for the virality of all the shot videos and all the shot clips and all of that going, you know, and it did move organically for a bit, but we all know that at some point in time, a lot of resources was pumped into it to, get to, to get to where it is now. And I can tell you for a fact that, there's one of those kinds of people that would be able to get that kind of funding in mm. Nigeria every other year. Yeah. So that's where the gap is. I, I, this guy started talking money, so I'm interested now. Uh, check, uh, please increase the volume of his money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so to the tune of about $400,000. And you know this for a fact. I know this for a fact. So yeah, I mean, with a simple a simple TikTok campaign in the US will cost you like $10,000 for like... Yeah. This year, this year March. Yes, yes. So for so, that level that includes not just the US this year March, includes the global, US this year March and then mm-hmm. the UK and then Europe. Yeah. That's like that would finish. Yeah. So if you money think about money it, well spent, though. you yeah. can rig a local government election with that money. <laughs> 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 Do you want yeah. to rig it? Do you to just give just the to boys. Boys. Just, just <laughs> build boys. a power power plant? It's such a key thing in life. Uh, you know? and, and speaking of, you know, you know, there was a lot of like, you know, CK and, you know, DJ this, CK and DJ that. I'm sure yeah. Love Wants It has more remixes than any other song. And the novel that there's a remix album. Exactly, you know. Uh, shout out DJ Neptune. <laughs> uh, so, okay, on code. <laughs> so, um, 
when when it comes to like collabs and seeing you know Buju with Ladipo, uh, shout out Ladipo, yeah. and you know you see Highway, um, you, you see know. songs like Essence with Tames mm-hmm. and Whiskey, Ginger with Whiskey, uh, High with um, AG, Adekunle, mm-hmm. AG uh, and David O. Um, this thing, this formula seems to be working for, you know, getting your song to be the song, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Do you think that is the new formula? Do you think that's what's obtainable in the market? Uh, I would like to start with Chica. Um, I think collaborations... Do you think that's the reality of things, or it would be the better way to put it? I think collaborations have always been and always will be something special yes. and <laughs> always has a way of connecting two audiences minimum mm. yeah you know so if you can look as far back as literally if i want to travel back to even before i was born and they're talking about you're talking about songs like you know the girl is mine paul mccartney mm-hmm. and michael jackson mm-hmm. you know just bringing the beatles crowd yeah you know Into and then that. taking that you know the soul yeah. the black soul pop crowd together also it's, happened with essence with the justin bieber crowd as absolutely well. yeah. so that's what that's what these things do you know, they cause two worlds to Family not just sharing. collide. Yes, it causes them to meld. Yo. And it's a beautiful thing. Um, <laughs> in uh, in hip hop, for example, one of the easiest ways yeah. to get, you know, that love is, has always been R&B hooks. Yeah. Of course. You know, so yep. whether it was a Mary J. Blige or, you know, it was a Kelly Price. Basically or getting Dash for your... You know, yes, on it, dog. So, on it, dog. <laughs> you know, so those are the beauty, you know, and that's literally what you just did. Um, more money, more problems. Yeah, was Diddy, Puffy, mm-hmm. uh, and the pops are Diddy, Mace, and BIG, yeah. right? Nobody gives enough credit to Kelly Price, mm-hmm. who was singing the hook. Now, everybody remembers that song mostly for the hook, mm-hmm. right? The Buju and Ladipo. Ladipo song. The video... Actually, Buju and the industry. <laughs> actually, <laughs> at this point. The video was actually an ode to yeah. More Money, More Problems. Yeah. Because there was the same video set up, right? And yeah, is this, with is, the lights. And yes, all the like lights that. and the dressing and everything. Now, is that same formula of getting somebody who understands and can sing on a hip-hop beat and put it putting it together, mm-hmm. knowing how to do it. And it works. That, that is Ladi's cheat code. It's cheat code, though, bro. Listen to that project, man. Every hook... It every was not hook. playing around. I mean, every and you hook. have Fire Boy and Buju every giving hook. you hooks, man. Like, every hook. Ojuru, key point. But you know, but you know, but as you know, it should be done. <laughs> I think you know, just like you know, Chika, Chika was saying, um, for for the stuff with you know collaborations. I remember Kanye saying something like, you know, like talking about like why he collaborates a lot. I think he mentioned like, you know, like imagine a, you know a painting if you have like Picasso and like one of that legendary artists you know coming that would probably be like the most valuable painting of course yes you understand so there's a lot of value you know when you know different he- heads you know come together you know first of all the quality of the music would be better of mm-hmm. course you know there are different perspectives on things. and nobody's losing that's, their that's individuality feel, you know, yeah. Yeah. I, I work with a lot of songwriters you know I encourage you know artists you know to you know, make use of their services you understand yeah. like you know you see, you look at you look at like <clears throat> an album like Donda, and I've seen so many people doing so many <sighs> different things, and that's why like you're able to you know come out with songs like Come to Life. I think there was like a twelve year old playing like the keyboard at the ending of the song or I something mean, like. Can you know, always make it buffet? Yeah, always, like always. You, understand, <laughs> you can eat. You understand? So <laughs> yeah. so I feel we need we actually even need a lot more of more that, absolutely a lot more of that, and and you can't take away fan base sharing. Like you, yeah. you actually need that. Especially like right when you're rising, yeah. even when you're at the top, you know you're seeing like. I, I imagine like I, I I I'm waiting for the day we have and, and I know it's gonna come one day we have like you know Bonner Wizard and David on his song. Bro. Bro, that everywhere is going to scatter. And, and and that and that's the effect of collaborations, yeah. you know. Maybe that would be the like, soundtrack to the rapture. <laughs> <laughs> but it's gonna be heavy. It's gonna be yeah, heavy. Yeah, yeah. And, you and, know Yeah, okay, you can, you can go. I'm, I'm basically done already. <laughs> and also picking off the, uh, sorry, Titi. I'm picking off on this point. It doesn't have to be Whiskey, uh, Davido and Burner. It could be Thames and Ira Star. It could be Fireboy. I think I saw I saw uh, I saw someone talking about the fact that we don't have like our females collaborate enough. And I think that's like a real thing. It's a true it's a truth. Yeah, yeah, we need we need a lot more of that. We need like we need we need more joint pro- we don't really have joint projects. You know, we need like some of the biggest heads coming together. It just it makes it, it the music a lot more exciting. We know you're good. We know Aj- you can make Aj- the best BOJ, shout out. Yo, make, make those it no guys. Yeah, those guys, those guys. Like, no. <laughs> then they brought in files into the yeah. mix. You know, 
I think I think they make amazing stuff. Like you know, shout out to those guys. So, but Titi, um, I'm going to say this. You can cut it out because it's probably not going to. It's not relevant. When they say that, keep it's relevant. No, it's <laughs> not. It's why I say it's not relevant because I'm not really going to say much. But I'm just smiling so much that you guys are saying because I wish I could say about the collaborations because it's like huge we'll ones talk a, coming. We'll talk after service. And then the joint projects and I'm like, I wish I could say. But I mean, we'll we're see. all thinking in the same you know, right. you know, just it's all going to need to align, but the work is being done. The guys, especially these guys that we have, your Joe Boys, your Fire Boys, your Rema, they are thinking all in those boys. lines. Mm. All the boys, all the boys. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that the girls the are the too. Boys. Ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and give, it, just give me that, that cover, like the boys, the, the and then all of the, them. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Maybe we can all dress them in. Remember us, guys. Yeah. You know what I would love if I was the creative director? I'd make all of them dress in like female beautiful clothing I have. and put it as the boys there you go so with this we have come to <laughs> the end of the service uh, <laughs> thank you guys for coming and speaking you know, of collabs yes. at least we can start off with Ballon d'Or they've still not released it no it's, it's, I promise you dropping this month Ooh. Who? Yeah. That's inside information. That's Whiskey and David O. Whiskey and Bad Boy. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 World War. Should yeah. it have already <laughs> been? It's, it's so it they have so they have enough they have enough material together to drop. No, I mean, I, mean the, I, I want. I'll, I'll, I'll pay some dollars for that. There was supposed to be. Anyways, um, like, no, don't mind Wiz. Wiz was <laughs> no, before excited. that his announcement. Yeah, so the Ballon d'Or was recorded <clears throat> literally on the thirty first of December two thousand and twenty, mm. literally. So I had it on the first. So I've been listening to this song for like a year, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and. Uh, if they don't release it, we'll lick it. <laughs> See, if I start speaking leak, about if that, I have leak speaking song, about, I, have I was going to say, speaking about <laughs> leaking, if anybody knows the way that we can leak it and still, you know, in the I'll way go to that jail for pleases, that song. In the way that yeah, pleases please God. The, God and the industry, <laughs> please let me know right, because guys. I have a few. I think we are out of time. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for coming. Ini, Titi, Chuka, KP. Uh, thank you, KP. Thank shout you, KP. out to Don't Table Chat. Shout out to Trilla. Shout out Cloud Africa. <laughs> Uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Ah, Depending man. on what God you serve. <laughs> Happy Kwanzaa. <laughs>